Hello, music lovers, and welcome to another episode of The Woodshed. This week, what we've got in store is some Bela Fleck-inspired Crosby. I grew up listening to a lot of Bela Fleck. Um, he was one of my favorite musicians because of uh, the stuff he did with Newgrass Revival. Growing up in the bluegrass scene, playing mandolin, I was always fascinated about the, the, the roles and stuff that banjo players could do. It was like this constant... Um, stream of eighth notes or sixteenth notes and it never stopped. It had a really cool sound and I wanted to be able to implement that into my playing. So I've worked up some cross picking techniques over the years that have helped me get some really cool um, fleck-isms if you will and uh, there's plenty of great cross pickers out there. Um, on mandolin one of the first guys I think in history to really put a, put a stamp on it was Jess McReynolds. Um, you know, great cross pickers, uh, Tony Rice, and then modern guys. Um, Trey Hensley is a great cross picker. So, you know, this is one of those techniques that is a blend of finger style um, guitar playing, um, five string banjo type stuff, and it's all meant to be done with, with a flat pick. Okay, so let's dive in. All right, guys, let's talk about some cross picking. But before we do, I want to tell you, I got this Patreon thing going, right? I'm uploading backing tracks. I'm uploading Axe Effects presets. I'm going to upload this one to it. I'm going to upload uh, mini lessons. I've been knocking out like one or two of those little mini lessons a week just uh, when I've when I'm, when I'm got a little extra time for you guys, right? That's a, that's a place that you can jump in uh, that'll help me make, make more content, make better content, right? I'll be able to put more time into it, right? Right? because it'll it, it'll be funding all of this stuff that you guys are seeing. Now, what do you get out of it? You get more lessons, more videos, more exclusive stuff, right? Okay, we're going to be playing out of the key of E today. With cross-picking, I look for a lot of open strings. Anytime I can have open strings, uh, you know, the better. There's a really great... Um, Mark O'Connor album called Markology. And a really cool um, uh, uh, cross-picking intro. I think the song was Fluid Drive. So we'll be talking about some patterns that are very reminiscent of Fluid Drive. Um, and I think uh, most people don't realize Mark O'Connor was fabulous guitar player, not just fiddle player. Um, random knowledge. First things first, uh, cross picking is basically, it's just alternate picking, okay? The reason that the term cross picking is used is because you're not just alternating on one string, then going to another string, and then going to another string, right? Um, cross picking really means that you're gonna have a lot of string sets and note groupings that are one note per string, right? Like if these are the strings, you have one note per string. The other thing that makes cross-picking cross-picking, and it's a bit easy to do with this visualization, is saying lowest to highest string is uh, you, you, you work your way down, uh, ra raising in pitch, right? Because you're going that way on the guitar. It's ascending in pitch, but you're, you're, you're working downwards towards the floor with your picking. Um, playing one note per string, and then you jump back to the bass string, the lowest string in the grouping, and then you start it again. So here's our first pattern. We're gonna go down, up, down. And remember, it's alternate picking, so this is really, really important. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. So you see, it's it's continually played like this in, in, in the ascending pattern, just over and over again, right? We're ascending the thing over and over. But we're alternate picking throughout it, right? So down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, right? So let's take the key of E, right? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna have E on the G string, and we're gonna have B, and then E open. I'm using a little bit of the hammer on right at the top to give a little bit of that fleckism. This is the first pattern you need to know. It's the simplest pattern, right? So this is ascending down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Let's check it out. So what's really interesting about this, and, and when I play slow, I have to really concentrate on it. I, it's one of those things that I've developed that I can do it faster, almost easier than I can slow. Um, 
What's very important is to make sure that you are alternate picking constantly, right? Um, I don't use any economy picking in this. I'm, I'm alternate picking everything. And you'll notice, yet again, I'm gonna use this as our string sets for today. Um, what starts as an open grouping ends up on an inside picked and then it, it so it keeps flipping back and forth right because it's an even note even amount over here and it's an odd amount over here right so down up is an outside grouping and then from the upstroke here to the down that's an inside grouping right so we're ending on a down now we've got to do inside jumping back across over the middle string right so we're going down up down coming back across up down up and now we're ending on an outside grouping and it's pretty comfortable coming back around down up down up down up and it keeps flipping back and forth all right so time out for a second you're going to find out in this whether you are essentially right-handed or left-handed this is what i call it with with picking patterns right um it has nothing to do with actually being right-handed or left-handed um Picking patterns on strings is very similar to being right-handed and left-handed in that you prefer one or the other. You want to change from one string to the other in a certain way, right? So if you're an outside picker, cool. That's like being right-handed. Most people like to change the strings from the outside, right? If you're an inside picker and you like the way that feels, that means you're kind of like left-handed. Uh, the goal is to become ambidextrous, right? And be able to go in and out, in and out. And remember, uh, I'm going to change the angle right here. I'm not playing just up and down like this. Uh, Troy Grady and I kind of named it the pendulum of death because it kind of swings in and swings out. If I were to exaggerate this, it would be down, up, down, up, and it comes in and out, right? And it's almost like I'm drawing, uh, making uh, U's with my hand or turning a doorknob. And, you know, a lot, of, a lot of that same kind of thing is swinging in and out. You know, it's that kind of motion. So let's find out if you're an inside picker or outside picker. Um, my friend Ben Eller, if I'm not mistaken, he does not like to play on the inside string sets. It's not very comfortable for him. Um, and it's a discussion that we have all the time. You know, we're always talking about picking. Um, let's take a quick exercise. Uh, let's pause the cross picking. Here's an exercise I like to help your inside picking. Um, right, so we're gonna go down and play the inside strings. So one, two, three, four. So it's one note and then three notes. And then I'm just moving that top note around through the E major scale. One, two, three, down. One, two, three, down. One, two, three. And it helps your inside pick, okay? Now it's saved by the bell, time back in, right? And get back to cross picking. So the first pattern, again, ascending the whole way. So in the intro, you heard me moving diatonically through E. A lot of times I, I really don't like exercises. They don't sound musical. I'm always trying to find little ways to make little melodies and little um, etudes, you know? Um, so I like to have things that move around. Right? So now we're gonna move on to part two. And that is start to get comfortable with going up it and coming back down it, right? So we're gonna go up and then down, right? So you'll notice that this one is not really cross picking. This is just one note per string because the picking pattern never changes in this one, right? So it's not really as cross picking. So it's just down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. So the first two sets are up outside then the, then the top set is inside, right? Now, the next thing I would recommend you doing, uh, part three, right, if you will, is being able to ascend it over and over again, and then go up and down, and then ascend it over and over again. So check it out. So ascend, ascend, Ascend and then go up and down. Right? My little 
head tilt means that means we're going to go up it and go back down it, right? And then get that up to speed, a light jog, if you will. <laughs> So you start to see how it sounds a little bit like a banjo in that you're playing a note, every note is picked, much like them using their, their finger picks, right? It's the same kind of thing. Um, so now, the final phase of this on the right hand technique is to play up it, down it, and then at certain points be able to bounce strings back and forth, right? So maybe you're ascending, right? And then you want to descend it back down. And then when you get to the top, you want to bounce between the B string and the E string, right? So check that out. That's that kind of sound, right? So let's have version one, version two, 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 please. Now version three. Okay, so now let's work on all of them together. So here's a nice little pattern where I go uh, ascend, ascend, uh, bounce back and forth. Now ascend and descend. Right? Ascend, ascend, bounce back and forth, ascend, descend. Last one is ascend, descend, enunciation. Right? So let's speed that up just a little bit. A little bit faster. And then just crazy. Really fast. Okay, great. So now you've got several different patterns that you can use. This is really important. Check this out. I don't write these patterns all the way through a song, right? That's not what happens. I use these patterns as improvisational tools throughout it. I've got each pattern kind of memorized. Um, my muscles, my, my memory, my, my muscle memory is all programmed to just walk over to the shelf, get the one I need, and use that one at that moment. So something like that intro, um, God forbid anybody have to transcribe that out because I keep changing the pattern uh, almost with the improvisation, right? These little baby intros that I do at the beginning of the lessons, I'm always just like, okay, just improvise something here that's in the, in the vein of it. Just make something up on the go, right? So what I'm using is these patterns to move um, the rhythmic feel and give different um, emphasis on different rhythms it makes it really bouncy and cool and to me it's what it feels like a Bela Fleck or a uh, Noam Bikinley or one of those really hot modern banjo players Matt Menefee is one of my favorite banjo players they can just just use whatever role to create whatever rhythm pattern that they want with cross picking that's what I'm trying to do is have that kind of freedom so if I just want to improvise <laughs> So that's how I'm doing it, right? I'm just using it as an improvisational tool. And it's really important to remember that I'm not writing all of these rhythms out and then just memorizing them. That's way too much memorization. Nobody could use that in a musical setting when you're having to just regurgitate some memorized pattern like that. Uh, it's best to think of them in like many doses, like small doses, like this is this pattern, this is this pattern, this is this pattern, this is this one. And I can just go get the one that I want and mentally, right? It's getting very comfortable. Let's go over the very last thing that happened in the intro. And this is something that's kind of new um, to, to my comfort levels of, of implementing this. That's four string cross picking, right? Um, there's some, some cool moments of this in Steve Morse's playing. Um, most uh, famous is it's that thing from Too Many Notes. And uh, so that's how he's doing it. He's, he's like four 
four string cross picking, right? So I wanted to take that in my own direction. I don't ever like to use the term take it to another level. That's just weird because you're not taking anything higher, taking it left and right, not taking it farther. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, I wanted to take it in my own direction and implement little things like pull offs at the top or have a, li a little bit more freedom, right? Not so tied to a composition. Uh, trying to use four string cross picking in an improvisational setting. So the chords that I used on the intro were all based out of E major. You know, it was all things through there. And uh, it's an A major seven, right? So A, right, that's root three, and then five, and then major seven. Nice, 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 lovely sound, right? So there's the cross picking. This is challenging. Please do not let this get you get you down. Um, this is one of the most challenging right hand techniques that, that I've ever uh, tried to polish up and, and, and be able to use freely. Um, so... You know, let's just take it, and you're 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 doing exactly what I said. You, it turns them into triplets when you're playing the the alternate picking thing. So I'm alternate picking everything. And it creates this really hypnotic thing, man. When you're uh, when you're really getting the groove going. I just think it's beautiful, man. I really have to concentrate to play. Um, it's not that I'm playing light. I just want to play floaty, you know, like I'm just kind of floating across the top of the notes. Um, and and it's easy to overplay and try to brute force the technique. All right. So let's just let's just take all of that information about picking. Right. Um, then we were talking about the three string thing. It's just moving on over to the four string. So now it's down, up, down, up, and then down, up, down. Right. The great thing about this is it doesn't reset. Your down is always a down on the on the lowest string. Now, when you when you change the pattern, it will flip. So you have. So that was a big jump from the B string back down to the A, that thing. So I'm trying to play a little, little bit of mute there so you can hear it. And just trying to have that freedom in the right hand. Okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. Everybody's saying, Andy, how do I do that? How do I feel? It hurts. Uh, one of the number one things that I get asked all the time uh, is, how do I alternate pick better? How do I alternate pick better? Your alternate picking looks so effortless, blah, 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 blah. How do, how do I do it? Okay, I don't really know. I don't know. But what I am going to try to do is help you and help myself figure out a way to let you know what's going on. And the only way I can do that is through metaphors, right? Comparisons, okay? Let's get hippy-dippy for a second. Let's get real hippy. Um, I use this example all the time. It's the bicycle example. I love this, right? So a bicycle doesn't have any mystery to it. We all can see how a bicycle works. The, the, the pedals turn and uh, it, it, it creates momentum and velocity and, and, the, and the bike stands upright, okay? You ever seen a little kid trying to learn how to ride a bicycle? They, they can't figure it out, right? They're like, I'm just supposed to go and it's supposed to do it, right? That's because our bodies, mind over matter, right? Memorizing the way stuff feels. Until you memorize, your body memorizes what that balance is, you can't ride the bike. It can't be done. You can't tell someone how to do it. Me trying to tell you how to cross pick and alternate pick on this level, it just can't be done. I don't believe in anybody, if you see anything that's saying, buy this and you can do it. I don't believe that. This is an internal discovery. This is something that you guys have to find for yourself. But I believe that everyone can do it. I just don't think there's a methodology to tell someone how to do it. I'm trying to be very transparent with you guys, right? So here's the, th here's the fact of the matter is you got to look for a comfortable feeling in your hand. Do not worry about what my hand looks like. Don't worry about what Steve Morse's hand looks like or Guthrie or Petrucci or whoever. I mean, like... 
Tony Rice, these are all fabulous alternate pickers and their hands all look completely different. But what they've done is they've internalized that muscle memory, okay? And they've internalized that feeling, that balance, and they don't care what it looks like, okay? And it's gonna look different from everybody. For everybody that's alternate picking on this stuff, it's gonna have a different look. What I encourage you to do is to sit down with these patterns and these exercises, okay? And you gotta sit down with them and, and the moment you feel that, that temptation to brute force the technique, that's not the right way, okay? This is like, uh, what's his name? Edison with the light bulb, right? You got to find 10,000 wrong ways and then the right way will, will, will appear, okay? What's really important, though, is that you hard delete every wrong version. Like if it feels stiff and it feels sticky, you got to delete the way that you're doing it, right? You got to try a different feeling. Turn your hand a little different. Change a little more from the from the arm. Play a little more from the wrist. You gotta find these different ways to play through this stuff to where it's relaxed, okay? And it's not it's not like this. It's not like an up and down thing. It's not a poking thing. Mine feels like a swinging in and a swinging out. This is very exaggerated, of course, but this is how it feels, okay? I'd like to turn the, the guitar here and give you guys just some angles of me doing these, these things slow. <laughs> What's really important is as I speed up, the mechanic changes. Me playing this slow is not the same muscles and the same feeling as when I play it fast. So you guys have to practice this stuff and work on it at a jog, at, a, at not, not a nuts tempo, but you've got to try to play it fast, right? Or you'll never be able to play it. So you got to start slow and, and just get your target, right? Get your target strings and look at what you're aiming to hit. Then you practice it at a light jog. I, I worked on this stuff for years, okay, for years and years. And I would do it by, you know, at the time I was in Down From Up and we were we were touring in a van or whatever, being in hotels, and I would just always have my guitar. Uh, we'd be watching a movie or whatever, and I would just kind of unplug, just working on these rolls, you know, try to get these things comfortable. I've got them to a point where I can have a conversation and do every role that I want to do. It's so, like programmed into a subconscious that I can have a conversation with the camera right now and be able to do them. So that's what you've got to find, okay? And I hope this is encouraging and not discouraging, right? I think that each one of you guys can do this stuff. I think this is easily achievable with just the right kind of practice. Don't brute force it, okay? That's super, super important. You got to play with a confidence and an accuracy. You'll find that speed and precision, like I always say, speed is a byproduct of being precise, right? Going fast will happen if you're in control, right? And you've got to you got to memorize what that control feeling is. It's just like a banjo player when they play those scrubs rolls. You know those things. You know all the. All of those kinds of things, they're, they're like, it, it, it's, it's programmed into their fingers. Those rolls are just like muscle memory, okay? That's all you got to do with this. This takes time, okay? I feel like this has been um, kind of a like a telling the truth episode, right? There's not just like this way, hey, buy this product and you can cross pick. I don't believe that, you know? It's something that you have to find. You've got to get on the bicycle and find that balance in your right hand to be able to do this. Um, don't get discouraged. Uh, and, and again, let's just review real quick. Okay, let's wrap up the episode in a nice little review. We're going to have a, a ascending pattern, right? And then we're going to have ascending and descending. And then we're going to have ascending with bouncing back and forth. You can use these strings. You can use these strings, right? So... Right? And then we have the four string cross picking where it goes all the way up, right? All of it. So let's just play an E. So that was using it up, uh, up and down, up and down, and then just up and then up and down, up and down again, right? So um, yeah, th those are that's my thoughts on cross picking. 
Thank you guys for joining me here at the woodshed. I hope everyone's staying safe and uh, staying healthy. You know, mental health is really important when you're looking at the walls all day long and you're in your house. So I hope this video uh, brings you some joy and uh, gives you something to chew on, right? Why, why you're sitting in your in your crib watching Netflix all day? Put that guitar in your lap, get some cross picking going on, and start sneaking this into your playing. All right, guys, I'll see you next time.